Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to another Through the Bible episode. It's going to be an exciting, awesome message. You've got to hype them up, you know. <laughs> but actually, it is a good message. You kind of look at my hands, really dirty today, because I've been doing work on a Nissan Xterra 2002. Back in 1997, I saw that car for the first time. I'm like, look at this thing, it's awesome. It's yellow, it's bright. It's got like body glove seats. You could throw your surfboard on the top. You could go across mountains and adventure and go through deserts and, you know, just amazingly mind blown by it. So I always wanted one. So I finally got one. And yesterday I spent uh, almost a good hour tearing out an old starter and putting in a new starter. And uh, my wife sat in the car, but walked around at times too. We had AC on, of course, and uh, my son played there at the people's house. They had a farm. They looked at looked at the animals and stuff, and there was even an alpaca there. It's a bit of a tangent, but it all ties into this story. But why would I sit there, you know, crawl under this thing on a hot day? And rip this apart and get oil in my eye. You know, I wore safety glasses after the first little drop hit me right here. Why would I do all that? Why would I put so much intensity and in work a whole day, nine, $104 for the new part, an hour drive one way, hour drive back, uh, several communications on over the phone to work out the deal with the person I'm trading my car for this car for. Why would I go through all that? Because of the potential of the Nissan Xterra. I saw the commercials. I could throw my ladders on it for work, put my tools in the back. I can drive more people around in it than my PT Cruiser. The PT Cruiser was good, but it's not, I'm, I have a job where I have to take ladders, you know, and tools in the back. And man, I could throw the surfboard on it and my gear and it's so much potential. So the key is potential and the the topic of this message is potential. I want to talk about potential of something else. I bought Samsung Note 4 off of, I think it was, I might have used Craigslist. I bought this phone. It was pre-owned. And I'm going to tell you everything I did for that. It was pretty extensive too. I bought it, but and the lady kind of soft sold it to me. Oh, it just has slight battery issues. Well, I get there and it has more than slight battery issues. I mean, it looks immaculate, pretty perfect on the outside, beautiful phone, Samsung Galaxy Note 4, you can Google it, nice phone. I look at it, plug it in, doesn't charge at all. I'm talking zero charge, like nothing. Go to the Sprint store next to where I swapped the lady or bought the lady for it, paid like uh, $70 for it. It's quite a 75, it's quite a large amount of money for a pre-owned phone. No, 170, I'm sorry, yeah. 170 paid 170 dollars drove at least an hour and a half in terrible atlanta traffic for this phone went into the sprint store tried unplugging things to plug into it guys like hey none of them work can't plug it. i'm like all right fine see you later so then i drive to a store and i buy a car charger for it and that doesn't work so then i splice it open and you can wire directly into the back battery and find them getting juice i'm seeing signs of life i'm like great this is awesome then the battery life is intermittent. It dies constantly. So charger port doesn't work. Battery dies all the time. So I'm investing in this thing, man, because I know it's potential. This thing, you can do Adobe Illustrator, draw on it. You got, you can take notes. I mean, it was the one of the breakthrough phones, the Note, right? That's what the iPhone copied them. So what I did was I, I bought, let me just go through a brief list. I bought the circle charger for the back, but it didn't have the inductive charging thing so i had to buy from i bought a couple of those i ordered two of them from amazon or something online i ordered two of those so i could set it on a disc and charge it and then i bought a case you know expensive case maybe 19 20 bucks but i got good deals on everything so i spent 170 like maybe 19 for the inductive charger and then maybe four dollars for one four dollars for the other and then I just kept going because this thing's got great potential when it works. And the greatest thing was when I finally bought a portable charging dock for it. Ordered that. And you take, it came with a brand new battery and a little dock. And that was the answer because then I could, the battery she gave me was garbage. Had to basically set that aside, put in this new battery, and then it would charge. That battery would charge fully. I'd pop it my phone and I had a Samsung Note. Now I could do Adobe Illustrator, draw on it. All my apps for work, work. Video was beautiful. Everything was amazing. 
And why did I invest so much in that phone? Because of the potential of it. That is why I invested so much in this Xterra, the potential, what it offers me in the end. So where am I wrapping all this up to? Well, these are biblical-based analogies for the most part, right? Of course, I'm talking about the potential within you. Now, if you look at the book of Jonah, there's a verse there. These people were the enemies of Israel, and God's going to destroy them. Nineveh was evil, wicked. They worshipped Dagon, a fish god, and uh, just worshipped false idols. And they were evil, people killing each other, pornography, whatever. Just murder, lust, murder, kill, idol worship. Probably all the horrible sins. And they were an evil, oppressive people to the nations around them. They persecuted Israel, probably attacked them several times. I know Sennacherib was one of the kings that went and attacked them. But anyways, it was a very horrible people. So Jonah, God says, go and prophesy to them to repent. Jonah's, nah, I don't want to do that. Because Jonah knows no matter how weak his message is, if he tells these people to repent and they change, God, it's like a mathematical formula of the universe. If you're doing evil and you repent, you will be blessed and you will prosper and you'll do good. If you go, it's like in school class, if a kid's doing bad, failing all his grades, then suddenly the teacher says, you're going to fail. And he gets that light in his eyes like, man, I don't want to be a loser. I don't want to be a failure. He starts doing his homework. There's improvement there. So it's a cause and effect, like history, cause and effect. So, Jonah, I'll paraphrase here, God, Jonah wanted them destroyed, and God's like, hold on, shouldn't I, you were angry because this little weed died that grew up and gave you this plant, this gourd grew up and gave him shelter, shouldn't I also have mercy on this thing with all these people who can't discern their left hand from their right, and what does that mean? If, if you look at your left hand and your right, I can tell that's my left, that's my right. Discernment means tell the difference between. They couldn't discern their left from their right is another thing of they had no idea of good and bad. They were just going so evil, they were blinded. And God's like, Jonah, you're my man to open their eyes. So he's like, shouldn't I have mercy on them? You really want me to wipe them all out and destroy them? So of course, Jonah gave his message. They repented and God said, okay, you're good. Jonah's waiting for destruction, but they weren't destroyed because God saw the potential within this city, within these people, for good. And of course, uh, I'll read this book here. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 19, uh, verse 28, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. Many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first. So why did these people follow Jesus? They saw in him something brilliant and great. And of course, why did Jesus endure the cross? Because he knew after the cross, he's going to be at the right end of God forevermore. So you have to think of your potential. And how much more, you know, I got these projects, this Nissan Xterra, that's my project. I, the phone, I ended up getting a brand new one because it finally got left out in the rain. And it's great to just start fresh. And sometimes God, our heart is so bad, he gives us a new heart. And that's a wonderful thing when we get a new heart. But could you imagine if you created something and it was in your own image, every time you looked at it, you saw your face like you, we do it all the time. Husbands and wives have intercourse, they have children, father, me, I have a brand new son, Liam. I look down into his eyes and I see a reflection of me. He looks like me. He's got my eyes, maybe my lips, my chin, a lot of my wife's features. And the potential of this child to grow and to be anything and wonderful. And you just think, this is great. So we have to know when God looks at us, we're made in his image. So therefore, the potential is great in each and every one of us. And that's why if you think you're done, you're gone, look at Nineveh. They weren't gone. You're never out of reach because you have potential. So that is the summation of this whole message, the potential within you. And it's not like this self-help, the potential within, you are the universe, the universe is you. 
It's not one of those. Those get pretty weird because if you truly just look within yourself, you can't do it alone. You need God's help. You need whoever created you. That's like a car saying, I don't need the engineer that made me. I could make myself. I could do all this myself. You would say that car is silly and ridiculous. You can't work unless I put gas in you. You can't start unless I turn your key. And if you go to a factory, a car factory, there's somebody in Ford, there's somebody in BMW who originally sat down at a drafting desk, probably a computer, and designed that car. And it looks awesome. And, you, and it would be silly for that car to say, that engineer never made me. I don't need him. I don't, he doesn't know nothing about me. You have to look at your body. Sculpted, made, bisymmetrical, two eyes, ears, nose, mouth. <clears throat> it's one of the greatest artworks ever made. You know, David uh, carved uh, uh, Michelangelo, I think, carved David. And people are like, that's perfect, it's great. What about the first person who created the first human? What about, where's his credit? The guy that made the guy that made the statue. <clears throat> so you see, you have great potential because God made you in his image. So look to him, do great things. Thanks for watching.